Good morning, everyone. Today we're talking about beauty, and I wanted to share this classic story, Miss Rumpheus by Barbara Cooney, because it's all about how each of us can make the world a more beautiful place. Once upon a time, there lived a little girl named Alice in a city by the sea. Many years ago, her grandfather had come to America on a large sailing ship and now he worked making figureheads for the prows of ships and painting places across the sea. And when he was really busy, Alice helped him paint the skies. At night, Alice sat on her grandfather's knee and listened to his stories of far away places. When he had finished, Alice would say, when I grow up, I too will go to far away places. And when I grow old, I too will live by the sea. That is all very well, little Alice, said her grandfather, but there is a third thing you must do. You must find a way to make the world more beautiful. All right, said Alice, but she did not know what that could be. And in the meantime, Alice went to school and came home, and pretty soon she was grown up. Then she set out to do the three things she had told her grandfather she was going to do. First, she left home and worked in a library, helping people find the books they wanted. Some of those books told her of faraway places, and people called her Miss Rumpheus now. Sometimes she went to the conservatory in the middle of the park, and when she stepped inside on a wintry day, the warm, moist air wrapped itself around her, and the sweet smell of jasmine filled her nose. This is almost like a tropical isle, said Miss Rumpheus, but not quite. So Miss Rumpheus went to a real tropical island, where people kept cockatoos and monkeys, and she walked on long beaches, picking up beautiful shells and making friends she would never forget. Miss Alice Rumpheus then climbed tall mountains where the snow never melted. She went through jungles and across deserts. But one day, when getting off a camel, she hurt her back. Ooh, well, I certainly have seen faraway places, said Miss Rumpheus. Maybe it is time to find my place by the sea. And it was, and she did. Miss Rumpheus started a little garden among the rocks that surrounded her new house, and she planted a few flower seeds in the stony ground. Miss Rumpheus was almost perfectly happy. But there's still one more thing I have to do, she said. I have to do something to make the world more beautiful. The next spring, Miss Rumpheus was not very well. Her back was bothering her again, and she had to stay in bed most of the time. She could see the flowers she had planted the summer before from her bedroom window, blue and purple and rose-colored, and wished she could plant more of them. After a hard winter, spring came, and Miss Rumpheus was feeling much better. One afternoon, she walked up a hill where she had not been in a long time. I don't believe my eyes, she cried when she got to the top, for there on the other side of the hill was a large patch of blue and purple and rose-colored lupins. The wind brought my seeds from my garden here, she said as she knelt in delight. And then Miss Rumpheus had a wonderful idea. She hurried home and looked up native species, and then she sent off to the very best seed house for five bushels of lupin seed. All that summer, Miss Rumpheus, her pockets full of seeds, wandered over fields and headlands sowing lupins. She scattered seeds along highways and down country lanes. She flung handfuls of them around the schoolhouse and the church, and she tossed them in hollows along stone walls. Her back didn't hurt anymore. And now some people called her that curious old lady. The next spring, there were lupins everywhere. 
fields and hillsides were covered with blue and purple and rose-colored flowers. They bloomed along the highways and down the lanes, down in the hollows and along stone walls. Miss Rumpheus had done the third, the most difficult thing of all. Miss Rumpheus is very old now, and her hair is very white, and every year there are more and more lupins. Now they call her the Lupin Lady, and often she tells us stories of faraway places. When I grow up, I tell her, I too will go to faraway places and come home to live by the sea. That is all very well, she says, but there's a third thing you must do. You must do something to make the world more beautiful. All right, I say, but I do not know yet what that will be. We all have the opportunity to bring beauty into the world in our own special way. And I look forward to hearing about the ways that you bring beauty into your world.